Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commander, 93rd Air Refueling Squadron, Lieutenant Colonel Justin Tubiolo, I would like to welcome you to the 10-year memorial ceremony honoring the crew of Shell 77. I am Tech Sergeant Paige Keepers from the Technical Sergeant Herman Mackey Airman Leadership School, and I will be your MC for today's event. At this time, please stand for the presentation of the colors and the national anthem, followed by the invocation. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Will you pray with me? O oh God of heaven and earth and eternal life, who is the first and the last. Beside you, there is no other. We are grateful and thankful for the lives of the 93rd ARS members who gave their time and talents to our nation. Captain Mark Tyler, Voss, Captain Victoria Pinckney, and Tech Sergeant Herman Mackey III, whose life was precious and meaningful and taken from us in a brief moment, wishing we could have encountered them much longer on earth. O oh Lord, only you know our beginning and our end to help us to love and appreciate one another. Thank you for the wonderful memories and examples of servitude they impress within our hearts and minds. Mighty God, when emotions are triggered by holidays, especially moments, as we fight through heaviness, heartache, and eyes filled with tears, continue to give us strength and peace to fulfill our purpose as these service members did with carriage. Elohim, we ask a special blessing of continual comfort and peace for their loved ones they left here on earth. Mr. and Mrs. Voss a, and a host of family members, Mr. and Mrs. Castro, Terry Castro, and extended family members and those family members of Tech Sergeant Mackey III. Oh Lord, let us be reminded of your promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us in times of trouble. We can always depend on you. It's in your holy name I pray, amen. Thank you, Honor Guard, Tech Sergeant Slagle, and Chaplain Bynum. Please be seated. We would like to extend a warm welcome to our distinguished guest in attendance today, and we ask that you please hold your applause. We warmly welcome our guest speaker, the 18th Air Force Commander, Major General Corey Martin, and his wife, Holly. The Commander, 92nd Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Jesley Dykus, and his girlfriend, Jenna. The Commander, 141st Air Refueling Wing, Colonel James McGovern. The Vice Commander, 141st Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Angela O'Connell. The Vice Commander, 92nd Air Refueling Wing, Colonel Jeffrey Marshall and his wife, Brenna. The Command Chief, 92nd Air Refueling Wing, Chief Master Sergeant William McCurry and his wife, Nikki. The Command Chief, 141st Air Refueling Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Edward Pohl. The former 92nd Air Refueling Wing Commander, Colonel Brian Newberry, United States Air Force, retired. We also give a special welcome to the family of Captain Pickney, her parents, Larry and Michelle Castro, her sister-in-law, Christine, and her husband, Matt, and their daughter, Diana, her grandmother, Terry Castro, and her aunt, Alicia Lee, the family of Captain Voss, his parents, Wayne and Marcy Voss. We also wish to honor those who could not attend today's ceremony. 
Technical Sergeant Mackey's wife, Megan Mackey, his mother, Deborah Mackey, and his sister, Aisha Mackey. Captain Pickney's sister, Nicole Castro, Captain Voss's sister, Morgan Taylor and her husband, Brent, as well as his brother, Forrest Voss and his wife, Savannah. Finally, a warm welcome to all group, deputy group, and squadron commanders, honorary commanders, chiefs, first sergeants, all other Gold Star family members, and members of Team Fairchild for taking the time to be here today. Thank you all for coming to commemorate this occasion with us. Ten years ago on the 3rd of May at 1155, Crew 11 with Captain Mark Tyler Voss as the aircraft commander, Captain Victoria Pickney as the co-pilot, and Technical Sergeant Herman Trey Mackey as the boom operator, reported to the 22nd Expeditionary Air Refueling Squadron at Manas Air Base, Kyrgyzstan, to complete their assigned mission. The crew flew under the call sign Shell 77. As the crew took off, Shell 77 experienced a flight control malfunction, causing the jet to roll and yaw from side to side. As the oscillations became more pronounced, the crew of Shell 77 fought hard to control the aircraft and diagnose the cause of the malfunction. The tail section separated, causing the aircraft to become uncontrollable, and the jet was lost over the mountains south of Manas Air Base. Our friends and coworkers perished doing what they loved, flying and supporting the mission of the United States Air Force. We are here today to honor their memory. For the family members of Tyler, Tori, and Trey, Fairchild stands in solidarity with you. The loss and pain you continue to feel, as well as the pride knowing they gave the ultimate sacrifice for our country. The spirit and mission of the crew of Shell 777 continues to live on in all of us. They may be gone, but they will never be forgotten. Although we miss Tyler, Tori, and Trey deeply, their memory will remain alive forever at Fairchild Air Force Base. Every time we visit or pass by this memorial, we are reminded of their personal sacrifice and dedication to duty. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, it is our pleasure to introduce Colonel Brian Newberry, retired, who would like to say a few words. Good afternoon, Team Fairchild. General Martin, Holly, Colonel Dykus, Colonel McGovern, Guard Team, the 93rd ARS, and to all the 92nd partners who were impacted by the loss of our heroes. And of course, our greatest acknowledgement to our Shell 77 families. There's not been a May 3rd since 2013 where I have not come to this sacred ground and this poetic monument uh, made possible by the generous people of Spokane who donated $13,000 in two weeks to make it so. It is so right for Captain Voss, Captain Pickney, and Tech Sergeant Mackey to be remembered over the last decade. And I deeply believe you if you say their name, they live on. Thank you for the opportunity to give a few reflections. My time here will be brief, but as our military services face huge recruiting challenges, the Shell 77 story of heroism reminds me that the military ethos of never leaving a wingman behind is one reason that the military is the greatest calling one can have. He ain't heavy, he's my brother. She ain't heavy, she's my sister. Let me speak of so many loyal wingmen that tragic day. That day of the accident, Captain Oswald, my exec, deployed at the time to Manas, and friend of each of them, called back and was not at liberty for ComSec reasons to say, say anything, but his silence, he told me everything. And it, everything I needed to know to wake my wing up to prepare us for the challenging day ahead for us to come and the many months to come. Captain Dead Gaddis, a new aircraft commander and very, very close to Tory, had a Manas supply mission over the North Pole just five days after the accident. One of our 135s had fallen out of the sky and we didn't know why. She had lost a friend and her duty was to, supply, uh, was to resupply General Martin and his team at Manas. I met her on the aircraft, she teared up, I teared up, and she looked me in the eye and she said, Colonel Dewberry, I got this, this one's for Tory. She was bound to not let Manas go dry on plane parts, which, which would de de deprive troops on the ground in Afghanistan from 24-7 tanker support. Speaking of maintainers, we must uplift Master Sergeant Perot, who flew experimental planes with the best pilot the world has ever seen, Tyler Voss. These two were building an airplane together, and the parts Tyler ordered were showing up after his tragic loss. What did Master Sergeant Perot do? He nobly finished the experimental plane. 
and flew it down to the Voss family to tell them that Tyler Voss's love of flying still lived on. To the red, white, and blue community with a lilac heart, 10 years ago this month, Spokane, you lined our streets from Bay Sops to the Opera House downtown, waving old glory so the families back for a memorial could see their love of fallen heroes. Spokane, you didn't leave your wingmen behind, you never will. And who, finally, whose love is greatest? It's this family right here and right on Zoom today. Of course, it's our Shell 7-7 families who stood strong for us in the darkest times. I certainly was a wounded wing commander as we nervously awaited the, the safety board results. And I appreciated Lieut Lieutenant Colonel Hallett, who's still part of this wing, being a representative on that board to give me confidence in that venerable tanker. As the, at the memorial, Marcy Voss, um, Tyler's mom, who's here with us today, having just lost her son, came up to me and said, Tyler was with God, he's gonna be okay. And then she looked at me with the strength of biblical Ruth, and she implored me that I needed to heal for the wing. How kind of you, Marcy, to care about my wing and me for all that you did. It was a powerful moment that served me well for the next 14 months. That's your Air Force family. That, in the ashes of Cell 77, arose like a noble phoenix. That is why Colonel Dykus, Colonel McGovern, Team Fairchild, you will never fail and we will never forget. I so remember Tyler's infectious smile and the selfie he took flying that experimental plane. Tori's smile of joy and her flat Stanley. She made for her young son Gabriel while she deployed with arms outstretched to give him a hug. And Trey's confidence at the end of his certification right before he, he deployed. Colonel Newberry, Trey said, I'm so happy to be flying again from America having just come off a sensor operator non-flying assignment. His smile, it said it all. Oh, one more team who never left us behind. Of course, it's our heroes, Tyler, Tori, and Trey. I listened to the audio tapes twice of their final flight, and I must say, they did everything right, everything. Their final flight was 11 minutes long, 11 minutes. And you know what they did for 10 minutes and 50 seconds in, as their plane was rolling side to side exponentially so? They were trying to get downrange to refuel an AWACS. They didn't want to let a wingman down. This, this is what is built into the tanker ethos. You are always there for your receiver. You will never, we will never ever forget that ethos in our Shell 77 Angels. They soar above us here today with a determination as strong as a granite memorial here. May God bless our patriotic families in a country they deeply believed in, a country who remains a city on the hill, whose light of liberty will not be hid. Fly on, Shell 77. Fly on. Your boom is in the green. We got your six. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you, Colonel Newberry. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker for today, the 18th Air Force Commander and former Wing Commander of Manas Air Base, Major General Corey Martin. Well, uh, Brian, thank you for that. Brian and I have known each other for a long time and still remains one of the most compassionate leaders that I know and was perfect to be leading uh, the 92nd in 2013. Uh, I want to add my appreciation to everyone that made this event possible today and the things that led up to it. It's fitting to remember our service men and women who have died. And I think it's especially fitting to remember those who, who died in action. And for me today, it's extra meaningful because I, I knew Tyler Voss and Victoria Pinkney and Trey Mackey because I, f I flew with them. Um, it's humbling also. Now, having experienced Shell 77 on the Manas side, kind of on the mission side, uh, and then it's humbling to be here, the home station side where the relationships, the connections were deeper, the pain, you know, more acute, and that cruelty of the distance uh, had to be incredible. But I also say it's helpful for me to be here today and hopefully for others as well uh, two times before, I've been on this hallowed ground, but alone, leaving a solitary offering on the, on the three benches. So helpful now to be here in community and, and especially with family. Family that produced two men and a woman of great character, courage, and selflessness. And I, I saw those qualities firsthand. Uh, Tyler's who I met first in his 2012 deployment to Manas when I showed up as commander. I tried to fly frequently with, uh, with a cruise, and it seemed like for about five straight flights, I was always with, with Tyler's crew, uh, which meant I always displaced him out of his seat. He never complained. 
where we had a chance to talk. And sometimes it was about mission, but oftentimes other things. Athletics, like he could do a handstand push-up, and I told him I committed to being able to do one before the deployment was over. Uh, we both really appreciated the beautiful mountains that we flew over in uh, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, and we both said we would be back sometime after the war to, to see them again. And the one time he asked for a book recommendation, and I talked about the book Unbroken, which I had just read, the, the story of Z uh, Louis Zamprini's survival in, in World War II, and he took that on as a, uh, as a reading assignment. His deployment ended, and I didn't think I would see him again. But then in 2013, he returned as an aircraft commander himself this time, and he had two things waiting for me. One was a hard copy of Unbroken that Marcy had given him to, to deliver to me. She had met a World War II pilot who had flown some of the uh, search and rescue missions for Louis Zamprini and had signed, signed the book. And his other offering was a, a request, an invitation to come fly with his new crew, Crew 11, which I, I automatically accepted. So on April 29th, 2013, I got a chance to meet Tori and Trey. Since I had already known Tyler a little bit, I spent a lot of time talking with them. And Tori was just recently returned from maternity. And I remember at the time, not, not in reflection afterwards, but at the time, being incredibly impressed with her level of confidence in the airplane, her professionalism, and being a, a brand new mom on a deployment. Very impressed with that. And that we shared a, a commonality, even though years and years apart at the academy, we both played uh, on the rugby team there. And it was a, a joy to be with her. And I was not in the seat that day, so I spent a lot of time in the back with Trey. And as, uh, as mentioned, that he'd just come back from being a systems operator. And his level of knowledge of the battle space and the help he was and the hero heroics that he had already had. I left that flight buoyed, knowing that we had extremely talented youth. And so it was four days later, on May 3rd, when I heard we lost a crew, and I was walking to the Situation Room, that I was hoping, I, I didn't want to lose any crew, but I was hoping it was not Crew 11. And for a brief moment, I thought it was, and I saw first names, Mark, Herman, Victoria. And then soon I realized that Herman Mackey III was Trey, Victoria was Tori, and Mark T. Voss was, was Tyler. And so, we lost three great Americans that day. So here's my simple message. Being a student at the primary and secondary level, a student of history, I know that it's very easy to enumerate the lives lost in war. But often what isn't enumerated and harder to do are the lives that are spared because of that last full measure that people like Tyler and Tori and, and Trey gave. And some of them are going to remain nameless and faceless. The soldiers, the sailors, the airmen, the Marines that were on the ground and in a moment of, of dire need called for an F-16 or an A-10 to come in and, and help them. And in minutes, that aircraft was overhead and a show of force or laying down ordinance to allow our servicemen and women to live another day, to survive the war, never knowing that the only reason that plane was four or five minutes away instead of 40 or 50 was because a little higher up, there were shell call sign tankers making that all possible. And they'll remain nameless and faceless beneficiaries of Shell 77. But there are some that have names and faces. And if anyone was at Airlift Tanker Association last fall in Denver, or you heard General Minahan's speech, you met Marwa, a 20-something Afghan air traffic controller. She escaped Afghanistan in August of 21 on a C-17. In her early 20s, that meant that almost her entire life, she had lived under a different regime in Afghanistan than almost any girl had lived before that allowed her to go to school, that allowed her to become a profession, one of the best controllers that the nation had, all because of the umbrella of protection that was provided by the U.S. and its friends, and certainly from the shell call sign KC-135s. So I know the depth of professionalism and courage and character that was on display with Shell 77. And it's why I still, to this day, wear Tyler Voss's name on my wrist. Holly has Victoria's name on hers, and underneath a couple layers of, of blue, I have a shirt emblazoned with Trey Mackey's name on it. It is fitting to remember, to speak their names, as Brian said, and that we don't forget their sacrifice. 
And so now, if you allow me, I once again will leave an offering on the benches. Thank you, General Martin. At this time, we ask the Honor Guard to come forward and present a wreath in honor of those we will memorialize today. Please join us in a moment of silence to remember the crew of Shell 77. Captain Mark Tyler Voss, Aircraft Commander. Captain Victoria Pickney, Co pilot. and Technical Sergeant Herman Trey Mackey III, Boom Operator. While the loss of Shell 77 remains a painful memory, the 92nd Era Fueling Wing is stronger. Our resolve has been fortified, and we will never forget the sacrifice that Tyler, Tory, and Trey made for our nation. On behalf of the 92nd Era Fueling Wing and the 93rd Era Fueling Squadron, thank you for attending today's event.